less than 30, I will add a mixed number and a fraction. So today we're going to talk about what it looks like when you add a mixed number and a fraction. So let's just review really quickly what I mean by a mixed number. A mixed number refers to a whole number and a fraction. So we might talk about adding two and two fifths to a fraction. Our denominators will be the same. So we're going to talk about what it looks like when you add a fraction to a mixed number. Now there are a couple of strategies that we're going to use today. So instead of spending a lot of time in our math journals today, we're going to go right to our problem set because there's about three different strategies that we're going to be using. And it'll be just as easy for me to show you on your problem set as it would be in your math journal. So let's go ahead and get right to our problem set today. Go ahead and write your name at the top. And you'll notice that the directions for number one just basically say solve. So let's take a look at what we have here. We have three holes plus a fourth, plus a fourth. So we're gonna add like units. So you add whole numbers to whole numbers and you add fractions to fractions. Well, because I only have one whole number here, there's nothing to add it to, so the three is gonna stay the same. I have one fourth plus one fourth, which would be two fourths. Pretty simple, right? All right, so let's take about think about this one for a second. Again, I have whole number to whole number. There's only one whole number. 3 fourths plus 1 fourth, which equals 4 fourths. 4 fourths is the same as what? 4 fourths is the same as 1 whole. So we can say we have 7 plus 1, which is equal to 8. Okay, let's take a look at C. So we have 3 eighths plus 5 eighths. Why don't you go ahead and pause the video here for a second and just try this one by yourself. This is a pretty simple concept. Pause the video and see what you get. All right, did you get five and five eighths? There's nothing to add your whole number to, so three eighths plus two eighths equals five eighths. All right, pause the video again and see if you can do D all by yourself. And then come back and let's see what you got. Did you get six and eight eighths? Well, if you did, let's go ahead and change this. I hate to have this improper fraction here. So 6 and 8 eighths is the same as 6 plus 1, which is the same as 7. Did you already know that and already have that? If so, good for you. All right, now, let's take a look at this. We have something a little bit different. So you're going to notice we have a missing add-in here. It says complete the number sentence. So you can kind of think of this as a number bond. And at the top, I have the number 5. And then over here, I've got 4 and 7 eighths. And I'm trying to figure out what do I add to 4 and 7 eighths to get to the number 5. So let's think about that. Well, if I add 1 eighth, that's going to give me 4 and 8 eighths, which is the same thing as 5. So the answer here would be... 1 eighth because this would be 7 eighths plus 1 eighth which would be 8 eighths which is equal to a whole and I add that to 4 and I have 5. Okay so let's think about this so here we are we are at 7 and we're trying to get to the next whole number which is 8 and we have 2 fifths. So basically I'm just thinking of if here's my number line and I have 7 and 2 fifths I'm trying to think about what it's going to take me to get to 8. If these are fifths, then I would have 3 fifths, 4 fifths. Actually, this would be 8 right here. So I would have 2 fifths, 7 and 2 fifths, 7 and 3 fifths, 7 and 4 fifths, 7 and 5 fifths, or 8. So I would have to add 3 fifths fifths to this, so I would have 7 and 5 fifths, which is the same thing as 8. Alright, so think about this one. I'm at 2, and I'm trying to get to the next whole number. How many sixes is it going to take to get to the next whole number? Pause the video and think about that, and then I want you to write right here what you think the answer would be. Okay, hopefully you tried to do this by yourself. It takes six sixes to make a whole, so that means I need five more sixes to get from 2 and 1 6 to 3. Alright, let's think about this one. Again, pause the video and see if you can do this one all by yourself. If you get stuff, you can always press play. Okay, so hopefully you thought of this by yourself. It takes 12 twelfths to make a hole, and I already have 1 twelfth, so I'm going to have to add 11 twelfths to get to the number 12. 
All right, now, remember at the beginning I told you that we were going to be using three different strategies. Well, here's strategy number three. This says use a number bond and the arrow way to show how to make one. So I'm going to show you what they mean by the arrow way. So you can see what they've done here is they have two and three fourths and they've taken two fourths so they've broken it down into one fourth and one fourth. Now the reason why they did that is because they knew that to get from two and three fourths to the next whole number they had to add one fourth. Kind of like what we were doing up here thinking about how much it takes to get to the next whole number and then this is what would be left over. So this is what the arrow way would be. Okay so I've got two and three fourths and I'm trying to figure out what it would take me to get to the next whole number. So here's, how, here's where they get the term arrow. So I'm trying to get to three. So what would it take to get to three? Well, I'm going to go ahead and add part of this, which is one-fourth. So two and three-fourths plus one-fourth will get me to three. And then I still have another fourth to add. So I add one more fourth, and that gets me to three and one-fourth, which is the answer. Okay, so let's try one more of these. So I've got three and three-fifths, and I'm trying to get to the next whole number. Well, the next whole number would be four. So how many fifths would I have to add to get to four? Well, I would have to add two fifths. So this is where I'm going to come back to my number bond. So I'm going to take this three fifths, and I'm going to divide it into two fifths, because I found out over here that's what it takes to get to the next whole number. So what will be left over? One fifth. So that's what I'm going to add here to 4. And then I'm going to have my answer, which is 4 and 1 fifth. This is the arrow way. I'm just starting at this number and going to the next whole number, and then I'm adding whatever's left over to get my answer. Okay? Now, they don't give us any directions except to solve, so we get to decide how we're going to solve these. So for the first one, because I can see that I'm going to end up with a number that's bigger than 4, I think I'm going to start with the, with the arrow way. So I've got 4 and 2 thirds, and I want to see what it takes me to get to the next whole number, which is 5. What do I have to add to 2 thirds to get to the next whole number? I have to add 1 third. So I'm going to come up here to my 2 thirds, and I'm going to pull out the 1 third and what will be left over. Well, one more third. So that's what I'm going to add to 5. And that's going to give me 5 and 1 third, which would be my answer. Okay, let's try that again on this one. So I've got 3 and 3 fifths, and I'm going to draw my arrow. What will be the next whole number? Well, the next whole number will be 4. So what do I have to add to 3 and 3 fifths to get to 4? Well, it would take 2 fifths. So I'm going to pull out 2 fifths out of this 4 fifths, and what would be left over? two more fifths. So that's what I'm going to add to four to get my answer. So that gives me four and two fifths. Okay, if you're feeling pretty confident about this, go ahead and pause the video and try it by yourself. If you're thinking, eh, I'm still not so sure, why don't you go ahead and do one more with me and let's see if you can't try to do D by yourself. All right, so if you want to do this one with me, go ahead. If not, if you're feeling brave, pause the video. All right, so I've got five and four sixes, and I want to get to the next whole number. So the next whole number would be six. What would I have to add to four sixes to get to six? Well, I would have to add two sixes. All right, so I'm going to pull this out, and I've got two sixes, and then what's going to be left over? Three sixes. So now I'm going to add three sixes, and that gives me six and three sixes. Okay? All right, so I'm going to circle that so you know that's my answer. So why don't you try to do D by yourself? Do as much of it as you can by yourself, and then if you get stuck, you can always press play and do the rest with me. Or maybe you did C by yourself and you got it right, and you want to try D by yourself, okay? So go ahead and pause the video and see what you can do all by yourself. Okay, now this one you may have got a, you may have thought, oh no, I don't know what to do because they've kind of got the mixed number over here, and they have seven eighths first. It doesn't matter. Remember, in addition, you can you can add these in either order. So I'm still going to add six and four eighths first, even though they put it second. So don't let that trick you. All right, so I go from six to four eighths to the next whole number, which would be seven. So how many eighths would I have to add to seven? Well, I'd have to add four eighths because I'm looking to get eight eighths. So when I do my number bond, I have four eighths, and what will be left over? 
3 eighths. So I'm going to add 3 eighths to 7, and that gives me 7 and 3 eighths. Did you get it right? I hope that you did. All right, so we've got a few more here. So now we've got 7 tenths plus not 7 and 9 tenths. Again, I would like for you to pause the video every time you feel like you'd like to try one of these by yourself and just see how you do. All right, they're trying to trick you again by putting the mixed number second, but I'm still going to add it first. So I've got 7 and 9 tenths, and I'm trying to get to the next whole number, which is 8. So I'm going to add 1 tenth. Okay, so what would that leave out of 7 tenths? That would leave 6 tenths. So now I'm going to add 6 tenths, which is going to give me 8 and 6 tenths. All right, let's try F. All right, so I've got 9 and 7 twelfths, and I'm trying to get to the next whole number, which is 10. So that would take 5 twelfths. So I'm going to take 5 twelfths and add it first. And what's that going to leave out of my 11 twelfths? It's going to leave 6 twelfths. So now I'm going to add 6 twelfths, and I have 10 and 6 twelfths. All right, so hopefully you've been pausing the video as you feel comfortable, okay? So if you haven't done any of these by yourself, pause the video and try to do this one by yourself. I know you can do it. All right, so I've got two and 70 hundredths, and I'm trying to get to three. So if I've got 70 out of 100, it's going to take 30 hundredths to get to three. So if I take 30 hundredths, out of 87 hundredths, that's going to leave 57 hundredths. So that's what I'm going to add to 3 here, plus 57 hundredths, and that's going to give me 3 and 57 hundredths. Don't let those big numbers fool you. They're easy to, just as easy to add as the small numbers. Okay, last one like this. So I've got 16 and 78 hundredths and I'm trying to get to the next whole number, which is 17. So I have to add 22 hundredths. So when I come up here, I take 22 out of 50, and that's going to leave 28 hundredths. So when I add 28 hundredths to 17, I have 17 and 28 hundredths. All right, one more problem here. All right, to solve 7 and 9 tenths plus 5 tenths, Maria thought 7 and 9 tenths plus 1 tenths equals 8, and 8 plus 4 tenths equals 8 and 4 tenths. Paul thought 7 and 9 tenths plus 5 tenths equals 7 and 14 tenths, which equals 7 and 10 tenths, plus 4 tenths, which equals 8 and 4 tenths. Explain why Maria and Paul are both right. Well, look at Maria's strategy for a minute. She added one-tenth, and then she added four-tenths. What does this sound like? This sounds like Maria used the arrow strategy, just like we've been doing. She added one-tenth to get her to eight, so it's kind of like she did like this. 7 and 9 tenths, and she was trying to get to 8, so she added 1 tenth, and then she added what was left over, which was 4 tenths, and that got 8 and 4 tenths. So that should make sense to you because that's the strategy that we've been using. Now let's think about what Paul did here for a minute. Paul, it looks like 9 plus 5 is 14 tenths, so he added... 7 and 9 tenths plus 5 tenths, and he got this mixed number with an improper fraction. And then look at what he did. He just took his improper fraction, and he said, well, that's the same thing as 10 tenths and 4 tenths. So he added this whole number to 7, and that got him 8, and then he was left with 4 tenths. So the directions say, explain why Maria and Paul are both right. Okay, so how could we answer this using words? We already used a model, so that definitely gives 
a lot of the explanation just by showing that we're illustrating what they did. So let's just write a really short sentence here and let's just say they are both right because they still added 5 tenths to the number they just split the number differently. And what I mean by that is Maria added one tenth and four tenths, so she split her five tenths up, whereas Paul went ahead and added the whole five tenths and then he broke up the mixed number, okay? So, because this sentence is kind of short, it doesn't tell you a whole ton of explanation, that's why you have to include your thought process here. Because I went ahead and showed how I was using the arrow method here and I showed this, this definitely counts as part of my explanation in math. So just remember that. If you're using a lot of demonstration by showing your work, then you can use less words. But if I had left all this out, I would have had to explain more of this using my words. All right, so remember today, we were adding a mixed number and a fraction. And today mostly was all about getting from this mixed number to the next whole number. And we used that arrow strategy quite a bit. We went from this mixed number to the next whole number and then added what was left over. And that should work every single time when you just have a mixed number and a fraction. When you start adding two mixed numbers, it's going to be a little bit different. But whenever you're adding a mixed number and a fraction, this arrow strategy should always work pretty efficiently for you.